Hey, this is Joe Gray Bench Electronics. Welcome back to the bench. So one of my New Year's resolutions was to clear out my components stash. I have tons and tons of parts that I've been buying up over the past several years uh, because I wanted a lot of stuff on hand to be able to experiment and build with. However, I've amassed too large of a collection. Uh, there's thousands of parts there that I will never get around to using. And to be honest, I've decided, you know, I it, it bums me out that it's just sitting on my shelf collecting dust when these parts could be in the hand of builders who will actually go and build with them. To that effect, I'll be selling everything on my reverb store. There'll be a link in the description. I'm gonna be putting a bunch of my components up there for sale. Uh, they usually be sold in lots, like large collection of components, just to make it easier for me so I'm not shipping out a whole bunch of little packages. And inside there, they'll be grouped with similar components, germanium transistors, silicon transistors, old ICs. I'm gonna go through a lot of the stuff that's gonna be live on the website right now. Coming up, I'll also be putting like germanium diodes and silicon diodes up there. If you're interested in building with these components, there'll be a good collection of stuff for you to get started building with or experimenting. If you're not and you're just interested and want to watch the video, I'm going to go through all those lots right now and I appreciate you watching. So let's get started because this video is probably going to end up being kind of long. Uh, so the first lot I'm going to go over, some of this stuff is from that recent video I did of the electronic components I bought, uh, stuff that I just, I don't have a use for and I just want to move it on. Uh, also, I should say a lot of these lots, I'm going to try and price them really competitively. Pricing some of this stuff is hard because you could look at the far end of like eBay listings which charge like exorbitant money. And then on the other hand, you have to judge by like, maybe there's no listing at all for that part. So it could be, could be worth nothing. So I'm going to try and be very fair with the pricing. I'm not like looking to make a ton of money or whatever. The truth is whatever I price them at, there's probably going to be a bunch of people who say it's too expensive and I'm crazy. And there's probably going to be a bunch of people who say it was too cheap and someone bought it up uh, who are just going to hoard it like you did. I don't know if I'm going to make everyone happy, but it is what it is. So anyway, this is the first lot. This, uh, these are a bunch of ICs from that other lot video I did that I, I don't really think these have any application for pedals. This whole batch here are these AMD ICs. I think these are 8-pin. Yeah, they're 8-pin ICs, and they have the part number LS3265. I could find absolutely no information on these, but there's approximately 50 of those or so. There are down here some LH002H. I can't remember these are, maybe voltage regulators uh, or something similar. They, they don't have like a direct and obvious use for guitar pedals. 14 pin chips up here of LM124s. And down here, these, these are also eight pin packages and these are LM111s. These are comparators, I believe. There are some projects out there for comparator based fuzzes, uh, but generally not so much for guitar pedals. These are 723s. These are voltage regulators, uh, also made by AMD. I believe they're AMD. They have the AMD logo, uh, but I, I didn't know AMD to make um, like ICs, but it's possible. Uh, 556 timers. So these are dual 555 timers in one package. There are some projects for like uh, like uh, pedal bypass circuits with 555 timers, but generally not really for pedals. These are those PAL chips, programmable array logic chips that we looked at. Uh, these are made by MMI, part number PAL12H6, and these are PALC22V10. And then this whole brick is uh, like TTL Logic, the, uh, what's the part, SN74 series, a whole bunch of these like Logic chips that, I, I feel like I've seen projects for them before, but they're really, they certainly didn't have guitar pedals in mind when these chips were being designed or marketed. So this lot of ICs will be available. Um, if you think they're cool, that's cool. If not, no worries. This IC lot, these are ones I think have a better usage for guitar pedals. Uh, I know there's one, I, I know I did put some, uh, there was a set of comparators that I think made it in. Maybe it's these, the LM193 are like dual comparators. Or maybe that was the other, I don't really remember. One of them has comparators in it and I figured, you know, if you want to try one of those fuzz circuits, that's cool. Uh, these have some RC4558s from Texas Instruments. I believe these are used, at least some of them are used. Um, I should mention that the ICs, this IC lot here, the one we looked at before, as well as a lot of the transistor lots, I haven't tested all of the pieces. I've sometimes tested some of them, sometimes I've tested none of them. Uh, they're being sold as is. So these are 4558s used. I don't know whether they work or not, but they are, uh, from what I can see, real 4558s. These are the 193s, I think they're comparators. The uh, these are ST Microelectronics CA346, which is a transistor array, NPN transistor array. I think there's four NPN transistors in one of these, so you could do like a big muff with that. These are PMI PM148s. These are quad op amps. I think that's four 741 op amps on one IC. 
and LM318, which I forget what these do, but they made it into this bag, so there must be something. These might be, I think these are just single op amps in a seven or 14 pin package, so. All right, we're gonna move on to silicon transistors. I have a bunch of these uh, Motorola BC549s. I bought this huge lot of them. I don't remember why, but here they are. So these are original Motorola BC549s. Here are some gains that I measured out of like 10 or so, all floating right around 500, 600 HFE. I'm gonna sell them in bags of 100 pieces, uh, and there's however many there are in there. So yeah, these are Motorola BC549C MPN silicon transistors. This is a set of vintage silicon transistors from Ten, which is a Japanese manufacturer, and Hitachi, also Japanese. There are the part numbers, and there's about, what, six of those, five of those, four, five, eight of those, four, five, and five, seven of those. Here's a large lot of silicon transistors. I believe this also came from that lot we looked at on the channel. There's a ton of parts in here. Uh, there's a lot of these, uh, I think there's multiple bags of these, 2M2369s uh, from different manufacturers. There's another one. There's a ton of transistors in here. There's gotta be a couple hundred at least. BC39, BCY39s, manufacturer, uh, unsure, could be Amperex, STC. It definitely looks European make, these. These are some power transistors, more power transistors. Uh, these are Motorola 2219s. Most of the, almost all of this stuff is new old stock. I think I separate it out with like new old stock versus uh, used stuff, generally speaking. There might be a couple of used pieces here or there, uh, but I generally switch those out. Here's some uh, Fairchild 2484. These are 2297s. So yeah, there's, there's a ton of transistors in this lot. Uh, this is going to be, well, there's some nice uh, Motorola 5416s, PMPs. Uh, so yeah, this is gonna be silicon lot number nine. Ton of parts in there, all silicon transistors. And I'm going to take all these transistors and lay them out flat so you can see all the part numbers and generally get a guess at the quantities. If you look at the pictures for the actual listing, you'll see them all laid out. All right, this is silicon lot number 10. These are all used silicon transistors. I think also from that lot we looked at. Uh, so not as many transistors as lot number nine, but these are all used. So they've been pulled out of circuit boards or just generally have cut leads, bent leads, soldered. Uh, there could be transistors in here that don't work that were removed for, uh, because they were defective uh, or they could have just been removed out of equipment that was getting tossed or thrown away or didn't work for some reason. They just wanted to save parts. Probably the star of the show are the BC183s from Texas Instruments. These were used in fuzz faces. Uh, we have some all gold 2N2222s. I think these are actually new old stock, but I just threw them in here because most of the stuff is used. But that's kind of interesting. Those are 5415s. These are some old Texas Instruments 2S323s. What else? Some BC109s. Manufacturer. I see some National Semiconductor in there. Some Siemens. ITT is in there. Uh, here's some unijunction transistors. Yeah, so there's, these are all used transistors and this is gonna be lot number 10 of silicon transistors. Here's another product that's gonna be similar to those BC549s from Motorola. These are Fairchild MPSA 18s. I'm also selling these in lot of 100 pieces. Here are the gains. These are also MPN VJTs. Pretty similar gains to the BC549s. Uh, I don't know if the pinout is the same, but the application is going to be generally the same. And these are original Fairchild components. Less of these available, but sort of the same idea as those BC549s. All right, this is silicon lot number three. So this includes two S components and Japanese manufacturer components. Again, this is a really big lot. There's hundreds and hundreds of transistors in here. Um, there's a lot of these where it's sort of like a house number. Uh, where, but they're just generally like MPN silicon transistors. There's a bunch of those. I don't know the equivalent like 2N designation, but there they are. Uh, there, and there's, there, here's some more house number. There's a bunch of these eight HEP. I think this was a, a Motorola thing, these HEP part numbers in the same way like Sylvania did ECG. Yeah, a, bun a bunch of these just assorted transistors. You see these a lot in guitar pedals 2SC1815. That has direct correlation to guitar pedals. 2SC1318s, 
two SD four six eights. These are Panasonic's, I believe. Both of these are Panasonic. Yep, Panasonic. They have the Matsushita logo. Matsushita became Panasonic. Just miscellaneous Japan made silicons. Two SA nine eight four Ks. Also Panasonic. Here's a big bag of twenty two nineteens Motorola. Here's some Motorola two N seven zero eights. These are Motorola C three six five five seven. I'm not sure if that's a house number or not, but those are gold leads, which is kind of neat. Two SC nine four fives. These uh, I'm not sure of the manufacturer. Of these two SD four seven ones. These are some higher power transistors. Yeah, so a bunch of transistors in here. Most all of these are going to be new old stock from Japanese manufacturers. Like I said, there might be a couple used parts here and there. Um, I do my best to sort them out, but overwhelmingly used, or excuse me, overwhelmingly new old stock for this lot. And this is lot number three. All right, this is lot number four. These are all silicon transistors from the UK or from Europe. Smaller lot here, but still, you know, at least the 200, 300 transistors, it looks like. Uh, these are actually thyristors, uh, CR1401s. Here's some BCY34s. If you're ever unsure, uh, whenever you see like a CY or an SY, if it starts with an A, it's germanium. If it starts with a B, it is silicon. These are from ASM. Uh, ASM is Associated Semiconductor Manufacturers, which is what Mullard joined up with uh, GEC. They partnered and became ASM. So it's essentially Mullard, but yeah. And these are BCY34s. There's some more BCY34s with gold leads. These are just miscellaneous um, silicon transistors. There's a uh, BCZ11 in there, which is an OC202 or an OC201 counterpart. Collection of transistors there. There are some CV parts. CV is the military designation. Uh, and I, in this case, I put the, um, the normal BSY equivalent in there. CV9507s. These are ASM as well. There's some Darlingtons apparently in there. BSY 95s and get those. yeah, so here are, this is lot number four, silicon transistors from the UK or from Europe. Uh, so that'll include ASM, which is Muller GEC, STC, Valvo, Philips, uh, Amperex, Holland, Amperex Holland. Amperex also had um, a presence, I guess, in New York. This bag is used, so there is a used bag, but most of these are new old stock, there is a bag of used. Oh yeah, and these are cool. Lucas DT 1122s and 1050s, and these are all like almost fully gold plated. All right, here's a lot of silicon. This is lot number two. These are just miscellaneous stuff that I couldn't find a home in any other lot, I guess. Uh, some of these are gonna be just like unmarked where they measured out of silicon, but I couldn't get any more inf information out of them. Uh, and it looks like this is mostly new old stuff. There might be a couple used parts in there. Uh, these are unmarked or probably no discernible marking. Uh, oh no, there's, there's some markings. They're just, it's just low numbers of parts. MPN, miscellaneous silicon unknown. Uh, these are USA made silicons of various, uh, makes and models. These, this is marked HFE greater than 99. And these are miscellaneous PMPs. And then there's a big bin of miscellaneous USA silicon transistors that have HFE lower than 99. Um, so there's gonna be some vintage stuff in here for sure. Uh, and there are some used in here. So it's a mix of new and used in this, but mostly new old stock again for this lot. And this is lot number two. Okay, this is silicon lot number six. These, uh, I came from a seller in the UK. I can't remember exactly who I got these from, but uh, I remember they came from the UK. And these are just big bags of used silicon transistors, just poles and who knows whatever else. These I think are new old stock, um, but they don't really have any markings on them and they're all silicon transistors. Uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're unmarked. Uh, some used 2N1613s here. And then, yeah, just two big bags of poles and cutoffs and whatnot. Um, they're all kind of a little dusty and dirty. Uh, so yeah, these are all used silicon transistors. There's hundreds and hundreds here. And this is lot number six. All right, this is silicon lot number seven. These are all non-2N designation silicon transistors that didn't have a home anywhere else. Uh, these are Philco DAT1762s, HFE about 20. So very low gain, but these are 
kind of cool. These are in like the original OEM packaging. And they have like a like a military number. And they're like vacuum sealed. Where were these used? Probably like test equipment, computers, like early computers, stuff like that, where HFE wasn't important because they're just being used as switches. Don't know how many is in there, probably know, 10, 15, 20 maybe. Uh, we have some 4JX house number sort of things. I think 4JX is almost always General Electric, at least that I've seen. These are MPNs. TR-23s, uh, what else, these are, these look like, these are National Semiconductor with the house number, what else, uh, these are GI, which is General Instrument, 13643, TN-61s, BC-179s from Amperex, some more National Semiconductor, more National Semiconductor, more Nat Semi, CS9010 or 9012s, and these look like, uh, I see a couple marked Harris, Fairchild, RCA 40317s, yeah there's some used uh, 4JX part numbers here, dual transistors, yeah, so just a lot of kind of miscellaneous stuff. There's a couple using there, mostly new old stock as usual. This is lot number seven. All right, and this is silicon lot number one, uh, USA and 2N numbers. Uh, so we have 2N 2222s from Allegro Microsystems. I think these actually came from Small Bear. I think these were in, I bought one of the, when Small Bear was like, transitioning owners they did a bunch of these like grab boxes and i think this was, it was in one of the grab boxes that i bought uh here's some fairchild 2n 3643s these are really nice transistors here gold leads good number of them 58 of them mpns here are some 4416s from siliconics uh these and national semiconductor the fairchild 3015s fairchild more fairchild uh, 2N11, 2M117, so this is going to be like a really early silicon transistor from Texas Instruments. 2219s, 1132s, uh, 2905s, 3011s, and there's good numbers of all these parts. You know, there's not like one or two. It's like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Uh, 3725s from Texas Instruments. These look a little older. Uh, 4033s, so yeah. A few hundred more silicon transistors, all with the 2N designation and USA manufacturers. This is lot number one. All right, so I believe that's it for the silicon transistor lots. So we're going to move on to the uh, germanium transistor lots. Uh, but first, we're going to look at a couple of little pieces of germanium stuff. Starting with the prescription electronics transistor sets. Uh, I sold a bunch of these off. I had gotten these from the estate sale of Jack Brossard, who was the owner of prescription electronics. He passed away, unfortunately. I sold a bunch of these sets that I believe are for um, the Prescription Electronics Yard Box, uh, which is essentially just like a, a tone bender, a three transistor tone bender. I sold a bunch of these lots and I kept back a handful of them because I just wanted to make sure, just in case someone happened to get a, a dud, I'd be able to replace it. Uh, thankfully, I didn't have any problems. No one had any issues that I heard. So I'm gonna sell off the rest of them. Once these are gone, they're gone. I don't have any to replace them with, so it's definitely like buying as is. Uh, and there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven left over, so it'll be, these will be available. I'll sell them for the same price, 10 bucks a set. If you're interested, there will be some available. And yeah, like I said, once they're gone, they're gone. Uh, these I'd already broken up into 10-piece lots. These are General Electric 4JX 1C664s. These are PMP germaniums. I'm going to sell these in sets of 10 transistors. Here are a measured set of 10 gains and leakages. So nothing super high gain, low leakages, which is nice. These would be good for a, a low gain fuzz, like a fuzz face would work fine. Also range masters, any type of geranium boost pedals. Uh, as long as you don't need that like searing fuzz sound out of like a really high gain transistor, these will work great. And these are in lots of 10. They will not be the exact specs that are shown here. Uh, this is just a random pulling of 10, but they should be similar. 
Same sort of thing, The I have broken these up into lots of 10. These are 2SB457As, also PMP germaniums. Here's a set of five tested. Sort of the same area as the uh, the 4JX germaniums we just looked at. Um, maybe a little bit higher gain, maybe a little bit higher leakage. And these are Mitsubishi 2SB457s. Here are a bunch of ACY or ASY used European germaniums. Uh, just stuff that had been stragglers from different collections over time. We have ACY 17s, ACY 21s, ACY 20s, and these are just ACY 19s, a little mish, miscellaneous there. These are untested, they are used, so there could be duds in here. Um, I did test 10 of the ACY 21s here, or five actually, it looks like. There's the test of the ACY 21s. And they're all, like I said, they're used. So they have shortened bleed, soldered, etc. But if you want to get started real cheap with germanium, this might be the way to go. And they are European make, so they do have a little bit of like provenance, I guess you could say, or whatever. Uh, here are the germanium transistors. We looked at these in a YouTube video. Uh, the video like buying used germaniums, is it worth it? It's been a while since I watched that video, but I remember, I think the two N169s were decent. These are NPM germaniums and there are some good gains. I think I separated out the highest ones here. Uh, these other ones, the 44s, the 135s, the 136s, these were lower gains in the like 20s and 30s, 40s-ish. Uh, I actually, I did a spreadsheet testing all these transistors. I pulled out the duds so they shouldn't be in here. If you want to look at the gains, I'll put a link for it in the description or for the item. Um, so these are all General Electric black germanium transistors, mostly PMP it looks like, but the 196s are MPN. Just going to sell all these together. This is a lot of weird germanium transistors. Uh, I think these came with the same U uh, UK lot that had those old used transistors. Uh, these are all gold leaded and they all have these like different color wraps. So these are probably sorting at some company for whatever reason. Some of them have decent measurements like the green ones here have some good gains. Some of them are kind of leakage, heavy. The yellow ones here, these look like they're floating these are kind of low, but low leakage. The red ones here are a little bit higher, like 40, 50, 60, 70s. The blue ones look really low here uh, and potentially have some other stuff going on because they measure weird. These ones didn't really measure like much at all, uh, just as diodes. And do we look at any others? The uh, silver ones here, the ones without a color wrap, these look like they had a couple that were a little bit higher gain. So yeah, this is more just like experimenters, you know, I'm gonna sell these pretty cheap probably. This is a set of used Japanese germanium transistors. Looks like a lot of these have been tested. The ones on the right here look like to be Sanyo 2SB numbers, 2SB22, 2SB33, 2SA202. These over here look like they have all different part numbers. They've all been tested. A couple of the ones have the plus. I couldn't get a consistent measurement, like the numbers were increasing, which could mean they're just settling out or it could mean they have a little bit of thermal runaway. So uh, I, I don't know if those are good or not. The other ones are probably decent. And these have good gain, but kind of a lot of leakage. So there are some fuzzes that need higher leakage. So that might be the right call for that. Some of these are more okay. This'll, this lot will be pretty cheap, I imagine. I have a couple of sets of germanium transistors from Small Bear. This was their generic fuzz face PMP set. Uh, Small Bear also gives you a bunch of resistors um, that should theoretically bi bias the transistor correctly. Um, as far as transistors, this has a, I think this is germanium power devices. I believe that's the manufacturer, 2N404, 74 HFE, and Q2 is a Texas Instruments 2N404 at 129. And this is just one of those Small Bear sets. I think I got this for like testing or comparing uh, a video that maybe never materialized. The other set here, these are Valvo OC76s, also a small bear set. I think I got these from someone else. So they had bought it from small bear and then I bought it from them. These are the measurements 90, 111, 136, all with low leakage. And this was sold as a tone bender set. So that is an application you started using for. You could also probably grab a couple of these and make a fuzz face too if you wanted. But there you go, those are those. And then finally, we'll get to the lots of germanium transistors. So uh, these are going to be just surplus transistors. Like as with the silicon transistor lots, it's gonna be mostly new old stock. There might be a couple used pieces here and there. And I'll hopefully try and do these in order. Lot number one, looks like a bunch of UK or European transistors, GET, 895, 
ACY 17s from New Market, New Market 143s, 535s, New Market 224s, stuff from ASM, which again is pretty much Mullard, AC1, uh, ACY 19s, stuff from RS. RS is a uh, distributor, I'm not sure exactly who made these. Uh, ACY 127s from Mullard, at least they look like Mullard. I think they're Mullard. These are MPNs. ACY 20s, 17s, 41s. ACY 41 is, is in some pedal, because I know I've looked at these and they were like selling for a bunch of money. I was like, oh, that's weird. Uh, 2N 2190s, 1302s from some UK make, maybe Muller or STC is what I thought at the time. Texas Instruments, uh, 1308s, 1307s, 1306s. So there's PMP and MPN in here. Uh, yeah, so there's a bunch of... Different part numbers, Tesla, which is like the uh, Yugoslavian, I think it is Tesla, not the other one. Uh, and yeah, so a bunch of Germanian transistors there, probably that's lot number one. This is lot number two, uh, and these look like they are Japanese make, uh, all new old stock. This is NEC, 2SB 112s, Mitsubishi, Fujitsu 2SB 22s, 10 2SA 267s, RS 103s, 2SB 187s. Uh, not sure on the make there. Sanyo 2SB400, Sanyo 2SB303, 2SB22, 2SB173, 173, Sanyo, uh, Sanyo, Motorola, 173, Motorola, 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 Motorola. So the exact number, of, I shouldn't say the exact number, the very close number of transistors will be in the description for these lots. So if you want to just know the, the number. Uh, so this is lot number two. These are the J Japanese germaniums. Lot number three is here. These look like US made. This is a General Electric house number, G8s, G21s, GE with the 982824, maybe house number, G2s, G1s, 414s, 2N324s, 526s, uh, 526, that's what's in the Benson uh, Germanium Boost, I think. Not, not a General Electric, that's a different brand, maybe RCA or TI, but they are 526s, 98828s. 1305s, 508s, 388s from Sylvania. Sylvania three, uh, 2 and 370s, 417s, 383s. This is lot number three, and these are US company germaniums. Here is lot number four. Let's see what this is about. Lot number four has, okay, I think this lot is Echo and another company, GI perhaps, yeah. So these are Echo uh, transistors. 1605, 1376, 1304, 523s, all Germanium, of course. 445s, new old stock stuff. 219, 388s from Raytheon, actually. And these are GI, General Instruments, NPN. General, General Instruments, I think, is actually in my neck of the woods, Montgomery County, PA, or they were, I should say. 428s, 582s, 43s, 597s, 5, 59s, 404s, 5, used in a ton of guitar pedals, uh, and 1309s. So this is lot number four. Here is lot number five. And this looks like Texas Instruments. Yeah, these look almost all like Texas Instruments. 1307s, 1308s, 2189s, 1303s, 705s. A house number 558-550-2. 404s. Another house number 2G388s. Probably in made in TI, the UK, uh, part of Texas Instruments. 1304s, 1302s, 1305s, 1306s, uh, some with like short leads for socketed applications, some with longer leads for normal through hole stuff. So these are all Texas instruments, this is lot number five. Here's lot number six. These look like RCAs. Uh, so RCA 2614s, 215, 364, 217, 647, 647, 408, 412, 316, SK 3004. SK 3010s, 2N406, 2N, or SK 3005s. So these are all RCA germaniums. This is lot number six. Lot number seven, looks like more RCAs. So SK 3721, 1226, 1395, 1304, 1605, 1224, 1309, and then some 2044s or six, 14 of these 2N404s. That's a nice uh, addition there. So these are 2N404s. Or excuse me, these are all RCA germanium transistors. And this is lot number seven. Lot number eight, these look like, maybe just like miscellaneous United States manufacturers. Industro 2N427, 
international devices, 1395s or 17 of those, 599s, SSDI, Philco 1472s, CEP 1225, sure. Philco 597s, these are just marked UST, 383s, Westinghouse 30, 1373s, Philco 22, 226s, Philco 224s, Philco 1478s, 2N600s from Philco with these interesting like screw top mounting heads, and 1123s from Philco with the same screw piece. So interesting ones there. These Philco ones always came in kind of funky packages. Like you can look, see the 224s there. This is lot number eight. And then lot number nine, this is probably just like miscellaneous stuff that didn't fit in anywhere else. Yeah, unbranded, unmarked, NPN, germanium, unknown germanium. And these are like, uh, the part number is XTHS-25 12H PMP germs. They're new old stock, but I couldn't find any information. The size and shape of them, they look like powered germanium, so uh, probably pretty low gain and relatively high leakage on those. I'm also gonna list parts that I've used in previous videos. So I have these uh, Teledyne T3416. I use these for the clone build we did of the Reese Electro Zoe. Um, so if you wanted to use the same transistors I did to build that pedal. And I'm also gonna sell some of these uh, PMI OP07s that I have. PMI is Precision Monolithics uh, Inc, I think. And they designed and manufactured the original OP07, uh, which is a very common replacement for the RAT LM308. The original LM308, the Motorola LM308 that was in the original RATs is hard to find, and when you can find them, they're really expensive. But these original uh, PMI chips sound just as good. And these are dated like 1985, 1986, so right in that time period. So, and they have the same slew rate as the LM308, so they should have that same uh, kind of vintage sound, I guess you could say, of the LM308. So I think that's all the parts, uh, at least the stuff that's gonna go on sale immediately. As far as pricing, like I said, I'm trying to be really fair. I know I'm not gonna make everybody happy. Yeah, and if you aren't interested in buying, but you just enjoyed the video, I'm glad you did. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. You can leave a comment on the video, or if you wanna reach me by email, it's graybenchelec at gmail.com. There's a link for that in the description. I still am going to be clearing out parts over time, so uh, as I find more stuff that I want to put out for sale, I'm just going to list it on the website. I might not always mention it. Uh, I know there's going to be germanium and silicon dyes that I'm going to list on there, so keep checking back if you'd like and see if there's anything you're interested in. Otherwise, if you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate you hitting the like button and subscribing. I'm Joe from Gray Bench Electronics. Thank you for watching.